Welcome back to another track day at VIR in my E30. In this video, we're going to check out a back and forth between myself and a gentleman in Miata. Uh, it's an interesting comparison because unlike the Hellcat video, the E30 and the Miata are very well matched. The Miata is at least 200 pounds lighter than the E30, since I still have a full interior, while this Miata, I believe, is fully gutted for weight savings. Uh, the Miata also has a slightly lower center of gravity, though my E30 has a bit more power coming from its M50 six-cylinder motor out of a um, E36 325i, which in its current state of tune is making about 200 horsepower, while the stock 1.8-liter uh, four-cylinder in the Miata was pushing about 140. I don't know if this Miata is stock in, uh, under the hood, but either way, these two cars are close enough in weight, grip, and power that it makes a lot, a lot of fun to challenge each other on track. Um, and that's really what like spec racing series are all about. Uh, but we're gonna, we'll talk about that another time. Here we're going to start talking about these laps. So you can see uh, I'm I've been following him for a little while now, and here I, I actually make up some ground breaking into turn one at, uh, at the end of the front straight. But I came in just a little hot and lost some time through the turn, and you can see he picked up some distance between us. And as you watch this section of track, you'll notice that he maintains that distance because he's taking a little smoother line and making a little better use of the track. You can also hear some tire scrubbing going on from my car. Uh, so that's the, a little bit of that tire squealing, and that, that's me not making the best use of my weight transfer and pushing the car a little too hard, which scrubs some speed off. And so there he is up front, gained considerable distance before we head into the uphill S's. Uh, so at this point, both of us are flat out, put to the floor, and as we come into the uphill S's, uh, his slightly lower powered car is going to just struggle a little bit more to keep that momentum up the hill, whereas the torque from the 6 cylinder in the E30 is going to help me out. And you can see I gained some distance here as we come through <coughs> turn 10 and into uh, a set of oak tree turns here. And I'm very close to him. But as we pull through that oak tree turn, you can see him start to pull away here on the back straight. That has everything to do with how I entered the turn and how I navigated that sort of two sets of turns in one. He did it a little more cleanly than I did. Uh, I have to go back and look more closely at that to see where I can improve my times. Uh, good on him for that, that he's clearly doing a great job of negotiating that set of turns and maintaining a lot of momentum giving a point by to a Camaro. He doesn't take it here. He didn't feel like he had the room. So we're going to get into the roller coaster and uh, kind of keeping an eye on this Camaro behind me. I give him the point by right here. I slow down a little bit to let him let him go so that we're not fighting around this turn into hog pen. Right behind him is a uh, Porsche GT4 Club Sport. So let me get through here as soon as I can. I give him the point by. He goes by. That's a beautiful car. It makes a great sound. Uh, that car, very unfortunately, he ran that thing off the track earlier in the day and uh, hit the tire wall. So I don't know if you can see it in the video. Probably not, but the middle side of the car is just a little crunched up. So that's kind of a bummer. Uh, so here I reconvene with my Miata friend. And an interesting thing happens when you have to give point buys on track. Uh, particularly in a session like this where you can point by another driver at any point, you don't have to wait for particular straights, uh, is that it takes time and being very careful to negotiate that, that pass. So each of us ends up slowing down during the course of that, of that exchange. Uh, the same thing sort of happens when two drivers in a race are battling for position. Uh, a lot of times they'll end up being slower because both cars, as one passes the other, uh, they both have to drive off the racing line. So they, uh, they each sacrifice a little time in order to change position. And we're back to the uphill S's again. And I'm gaining some ground as we head into turn 10. Uh, this is a very fast turn, just a tap of the brakes to scrub some speed. Uh, I think in this case both of us definitely scrubbed a little too much speed. There was a lot of track to the right that we could have been using, uh, but both of us are being careful. A uh, little tap of the brakes as we enter uh, the tree bends, and we both get around, and again, he gets out just a little bit faster than I do. He's pulling away on the back straight. Not as much uh, as the last lap, so I'm able to stay with them. Uh, 
uh, and that keeps me lets me use the power of the car to get up close to him uh, and I'm hesitating here thinking if I should just stay back and let him stay out front but uh, he gives me the point by so I decide to go ahead and take it so it's another another leapfrog for the two of us uh, I get to be out front for a little bit see how much I can hang on or see if I can shake him off my tail and uh, if you watch the rearview mirror a little bit you can see that uh, through these turns he stays right with me there's uh, no shaking that Miata and if you uh, look in the rearview mirror, right there you can see in here, you can see that there are two cars behind him looking to get by. It becomes a little bit of a problem as we come up here through Hogpen and onto the front straight. See the car in front, you can see him, he's going to move off to the right side for some reason. Um, as he gives me a point by, which I didn't see until after I gave the point by to this Camaro behind me. Uh, it created a little bit of a problem for the Camaro, he couldn't squeeze through there, so... Uh, it was a bit of on-track confusion, uh, which is always nerve-wracking, but I gave the Camaro his point by, and here we are coming into the turn one, and I just tuck in behind him. There's another older Camaro, F-body, I think, J-body, I don't know, I don't know my Camaros. I give him the point by, and uh, he gets by me. Uh, I was hoping that he'd get through there a little faster, um, so that we weren't so close through this turn here, but that's all right. We made it through, no incident no harm no foul right so but you can see in my rear view again Miata still right on me um, part of that's because I have to be real careful giving those point buys but also it's just because he's very quick through this set of turns and you can see he's still right behind me in that rear view uh, I give him a point by just out of courtesy because he's been on my tail the whole time but he can't really take it uh, and we both know at this point that my car is a little faster through this uphill S section so uh, he just hangs back there, and I put a little distance between us, which, uh, you know, after Oak Tree, uh, he'll, he'll have made up. And through turn 10 again, uh, you can see I made a little better use of the track, but there's still some track out there to the right, so if I, I could carry a little more speed. Um, it's a scary one, though, because there's a big drop-off grassy hill on the other side of that. If you overshoot it, you're going to have a bad day. So here he's right behind me again, so I, I just give him that point by. Uh, he doesn't quite have the power to make it around, um, so I just let off the gas a little and let him go by. So I, I gave him a second point by right here, the yeah, opposite, to just indicate that I'm going to let him go. And I slow down and let him by so that I can uh, try to chase him through the turns again. That is a uh, very quick little car, very quick driver, um, super fun to, uh, you know, kind of trade back and forth and chase each other through these turns and through the roller coaster. You can see he's putting some serious distance between us. And back onto the front straight. And grabbing fourth gear there as I come out through Hogpen. Uh, that's always a tricky place to try to grab fourth gear for me because I'm just I'm hitting right the top of third. I'm, I'm just grabbing it right out, and um, you know I'm still still just finishing out the turn and have to grab that gear. But uh, and here you can see again it, I seem to be outbreaking him at the end of the front straight. Um, so I don't know if uh, that's me being aggressive in the braking zone or him being a little conservative, maybe a little of both. But he, he immediately makes it up so. Even though I make up some distance coming into turn one, he seems to negotiate it faster uh, and pulls away, so creating some distance. And then as we get up to the snake here, um, he's maintained that distance, and it, so we're both being pretty consistent here. Uh, there are sections of the track now that we know uh, he's faster, and there's uh, at least a couple sections where we know that I'm faster. Uh, Ultimately, our, our lap times are probably very close. Uh, his lap times may be a little faster than mine, um, but they're going to be darn close, which makes this a lot of fun to uh, have, you know, have a rabbit out front to chase. So uh, whether it's, you know, whether it's him or me, we can go back and forth and have a good time uh, challenging each other to do better on track. And you can see on the left there, we the uh, checkered flag. I wave to the course worker to thank them for the, what they're doing. Give him the thumbs up to let him know I had a good time. And uh, I went and met him after this session, and we talked about 
what was going on on the track and um, how much fun it was. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.